Hello, I'm Citrus, and I'll be showing you how I detail my kits with Gundam markers. But before we start, the first thing that you always have to do when you start any kit is to prep the parts. This is the high grade O riser, and eagle eye viewers will notice that this is from the condenser type double O riser. Uh, I've already prepped this, but the basic steps are pretty simple. You need a bin or a sink with a plug, uh, some lukewarm water, a soft bristle toothbrush, like this I have here. Um, small heads are very good for getting into the, uh, or for being more maneuverable, but I prefer soft bristle over hard because first it will not scratch up your parts. And when you have any parts with like particularly deep grooves like here, the bristles can really get in there. And uh, you want to wash this with dish soap because you want to take off the mold release agent, which is basically like a non-stick grease that Bandai applies to the inside of their molds so that the trees pop out easier after they have been cast. And uh, this residue, if you let it stay on the plastic, will prevent proper paint adhesion. Here are some supplies I recommend you pick up before you start painting. First is Top Coat. This is my personal preferred brand. Uh, it's Rust-Oleum's 2X Ultra Cover Matte Clear. The 2X cover actually makes it last a really long time. I started this one in March, and I think I've built maybe six or seven kits with this already. I really like top coat because it protects your work, and this one is particularly good because it uh, protects from ultraviolet radiation. You can see here, non-yellowing, UV resistant. This is probably available at your local hardware store, but if you can't find it, it's about $4 on Amazon. Pretty good, pretty cheap, lasts a long time. Next thing I recommend is denatured alcohol. It says cleans glass, but also clean up acrylic paint, which is basically what paint markers are all made of. This one can I've had for years. Um, one quart is $8, probably from your local hardware store as well. But again, if you can't find it, it's on Amazon. And my preferred way of cleaning up with this uh, is to dab a bit on a napkin and then wipe it over the area until it is clean. Of course, after the napkin gets stained, just, you know, move it to a different clean section, dab some more alcohol on it, keep going. You can also rinse your parts in alcohol. You just pour it out into a little container and put the part in it, swish it around a bit, and it comes off pretty quickly. This is flammable, so just be careful of that. The fumes may be potent, so be careful of that as well. Work with good ventilation. So aside from wiping up your messes with the alcohol, this is also good for uh, softening the ink from real touch markers. So napkin or paper towel, always good to have. Next, you'll probably want a metal paint dish if you intend on doing any fine detail work because the tips of the Gundam markers are pretty large and there's some crevices where they can't go in, so you'll need a brush for that. If you want to mix colors, uh, you can also use the paint dish to mix your colors. It doesn't have to be metal, it could be plastic, just don't use paper or anything because it will absorb the paint really fast and won't give you a lot of time to work. And the last thing is a toothpick. I really, really recommend these, and uh, it's probably cheating, but basically with a toothpick, you can really easily sort of scrape away at any excess paint that you have in any uh, area. And the sharp point will leave really clean lines, and because the wood is pretty soft, uh, it won't scratch the plastic very much. So definitely better than scraping at it with something else and it gives you a lot more control than wiping it with alcohol. It's very important that you do not substitute the denatured alcohol with nail polish remover of any kind. Even alcohol-based uh, nail polish removers have some sort of additives in them usually like dyes or something that could either stain the plastic or not clean very effectively. On the other hand, there is a uh, acetone-based nail polish remover which may just destroy your plastic altogether. As for the markers, these are the real touch pens that I have. This is the basic set and the weathering set here. You certainly don't have to use all of these, but I recommend getting the black and one of the grays individually. I prefer using the bluish gray on regular Gundams and the regular gray on other kits that don't necessarily have blue on them. So these usually retail for about 1200 yen, as you can see down there but some places really overpriced them, as you can see by that price tag. Um, markers are individually available for about 2 to $3 each. If you're not familiar with real touch markers, they come with two ends. The big side is a really soft sort of brush tip, and you can use this to shade over very large areas. 
the other end is a finer tip. The ink flows more heavily through this, so it's better for lining. As for the Gundam markers, these are the three sets that I have. I have the basic set, the metallic set, and the Xeon set, which I actually don't use very much because these two shades of red, as you can see here, are not really like the normal Gundam red, and the green doesn't really match um, much of anything, because Bandai has a habit of changing the greens every single time we release a mass production Zaku anyway. But the important colors in this set is the dark gray here and the regular gray. Uh, both of these two colors should be available on their own, uh, also about 2 to $3 per marker, and one of these sets usually retails for also 1200 yen. If you're not familiar with Gundam markers, they usually have a chisel tip, and they are sealed when they come out of the package, and I'll tell you more about how to use them properly in a second. For the basic Gundam marker set, you always get a blue, yellow, red, white gunmetal, and a uh, felt tip pen that's basically like the fine end of a real touch marker. So if you decide to pick up a whole set, you can skip on basically buying the black one. Bandai will re-release this every couple of years with a different picture on the front, but the colors are basically always the same. The last set is the metallic set, which comes with silver, gold, green, red, blue, and another one of those uh, fine tip pens just like the one here. Out of this set, the only colors I would really rec say you need to pick up are probably silver and gold because they're really good for touching up piston detail. But uh, for everything else, the green is pretty good for eyes. Blue is good for eyes as well, depending on the mobile you're coloring. And red doesn't really get used too much, although I did use this on the Barbados to color the uh, shoulder stripes and stuff like that. The metallic colors are particularly tricky because you have to mix them really well to get the ink to flow smoothly, but if you do, they look pretty good. As for the Gundam lining markers, I actually don't really recommend these because the ink in them isn't water or alcohol based, which means it doesn't really clean up easily. And when you use these over ABS parts, if you make a mistake, uh, for me, they tend to stain the parts permanently. You're going to see like the little line that you draw on it, and that is really, really bad. So uh, in most cases, the real touch markers will do just fine. So for all of these supplies, you can either find them in your local hobby store if they carry Gundam products or your local hardware store. But if you'd rather get it online, I have links for everything here on Amazon in the description below. As I mentioned before, you need to agitate the ink properly before you start painting to make sure the color flows properly. And all you need to do is just shake the marker. You want to shake your marker upright so that you don't risk leaking any paint out of the tip into the cap, which will waste a lot of paint that way. After a minute or two of shaking, you'll want to test the ink to see it's flowing correctly. And I recommend testing it directly on the sprue somewhere because the plastic will not absorb the ink. If you try to test the color on the manual, the color may not show accurately um, as it would on the plastic and also because the paper would absorb the liquid part of the ink before the pigment so the color may not look right. The color, you're, the consistency you're looking for is basically sort of a thick even color. It doesn't want to look too streaky. For example, if you see here, I haven't agitated it enough and it looks really runny. You can see here the color comes out more consistently and this was before. This is after, so this is what the properly agitated markers should look like. Very thick, even color. Brand new markers and old markers you've had sitting around for a while will need a lot of agitating because the ink on the inside separates. So to really make sure that your color flows correctly and you don't mess up the premix inside of the marker, make sure you mix it a lot before you start applying it everywhere. For metallic colors, this is especially important because the ink has three parts, the solvent, the silver backing, which gives the color substance, and the pigment. And the consistency you're looking for is like th that, basically. You can sort of see the metallic sheen in it. If you put down a metallic marker, um, in this case green, and it, you put it on any color of plastic and, it's just full of, and it sort of looks runny and not shimmery, then it definitely hasn't been agitated enough. So how, how you paint is ultimately up to you. I like to look at the manual for reference, but uh, once you have the idea of where the paint needs to be, just sort of put it down like this and let the ink flow onto the part. You'll need to wait at least half an hour or so for the paint to set. It's formulated to dry pretty quickly but touching it at all um, will probably ruin the final finish. 
you don't have to worry too much about uh, brush marks or anything like that because top coat can hide some of that but no matter how hard you try with agitated paint or lots of coats uh, gunner marker will never look good on large surfaces again you don't have to be too careful with where the color is going because with a toothpick or alcohol you can always clean it up Here's a sensor array after it's dried, and as you can see, I sort of went over a bit. So just take the tip of the toothpick and just lightly go over it, and you can see it going away. And normally I would be doing this under a magnifying glass so I can see exactly how clean the line is, but you, even from just that quick pass there, you can see the line is already a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of this and everything else that I painted up. So here are the plates with marker on them, and we're just gonna let this dry completely and then clean it all up. As you can see, it's also a little bit messy here, but uh, can't see it too much because fortunately, there aren't too many colors missing on this one, and all the details I did color in are pretty subtle. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna put it up together for you guys. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.